Well, I know it's it's been a while, but um, happy new year to everyone. And trust me, this year I have plenty of sewing things in store for you. So uh, let's get started. Well, uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, welcome back to a new video, but this time it's going to be Edwardian sewing and not Victorian sewing. So uh, don't worry, I am sure I'll do plenty of Victorian stuff this year. But first we're getting started on an Edwardian basic, and that is uh, the corset. So for those of you that remember, I found uh, this picture and I want to recreate her outfit. Now, you know how much I love foundation garments because underwear makes the outfit. So we're definitely getting started with all that. So first up, the Edwardian corset. Now, I actually love the dramatic shapes of them, like the hip shapes and the pretty laces and pretty materials. So I'm very excited to get started on this. And for those of you that are new to corset making, this video I'll try to show you all the materials I use and the stuff that you will need to get started in corset making. Okay, so before we can get started on the corset, I'll show you a little bit of the materials that I use for this corset so that just in case you have no idea where to start, you know which materials you need to gather first. Now, one of the most important things, obviously, is the fabric. And for this corset, I'll be using Cuchil. Um, if you have dived into corset making a little bit, you have probably heard of this uh, fabric. It is quite stiff and it's great for corsetry. Now, my first few corsets were from cheaper fabrics, so I've used uh, a pink jean fabric. I've used bed sheets. So if you're just practicing and trying out, you can always just use whatever you have, learn as you go, and at some point find a very pretty piece of fabric and make a masterpiece. Now then, uh, for the front, the closure, we use a busk. You can use different types of closures if you want to make a more modern corset. Some people also put in a zipper, um, but historical corsets from this era have a busk. It comes in two pieces, and this way you can close it at the front and then tie and then pull the laces at the back, and that way you make a fit properly. So that's a busk. The busks come in different sizes, so make sure you measure yourself first before you order the wrong size busk. Now, one of my handy things that I use in course making are these, and these are my clips, and they're very strong, and these are perfect when you're doing edge binding or when you're, uh, instead of pinning your pattern pieces together, you can actually clip them with these and not damage your fabric too much. Now, for boning, I use this, and this is a German boning, and this is the closest thing we have to baling nowadays. Um, I really like this material. It's super easy to use. Um, this one I can just cut with my scissors, not my fabric scissors, mind you. And then I file them down using this file to get a nice and round edge to them. I'll explain later why you do that. So this also comes in different widths, so make sure you do some research on which width is going to fit your project. Now for the back, the closure I am making with these grommets, they come in two pieces, top and the bottom, and these also come in different sizes. I really like this size, it's one of the smallest ones, and um, I have this very nifty tool. Ta -ta. And this actually helps me do all the heavy work because I can just set in my grommets with ease. If you don't have that, don't worry. Normally when you buy the grommets from the brand Prim and also some other brands, it will come with a set to actually put it in with a hammer. Make sure that you're not using it on a delicate uh, surface because it will ruin it. I used to do it on just a piece of wood that I found. So that works great too. Now, let's see. I think we've talked about the most important things. For my laces, I just use cotton laces. By the way, I will link all of the stuff down below so it's very easy to find the stuff that I use. Oh, and before I forget, the pattern is from RNA Black. It is the Tulip Corset and it's an Edwardian corset. Definitely go check out her Kofi as she also has some very good tutorials on corset making. So, highly recommend it. So, I've already cut out the pattern pieces, so it is time to get started on the mock up. Okay, it is time to check out the first mock-up, and because I don't have Edwardian undergarments yet, I'm just going to be using my Victorian ones, and it works just fine because it's turn of the century, 
So whatever I'm going to be making for underneath this is going to be very similar to uh, this. So let's see how this thing fits. There are some issues. One of them is it is way too big. Let me show you the back. It is closed all the way. So that means I made it a few sizes too big. And the reason for that is I actually didn't read the description completely. So I made it in the wrong size. Now, this is easily fixed. I'll just have to make another mock-up just to make sure that the other size I want to make is actually the right size because I only have a finite amount of teal and if I ruin it, it would take forever for a new piece to get here. So I'll be making another mock-up, but let's talk about this shape. Now, I really love the shape. I am going to change the hip shape a little bit though because this one has points and I kind of like the Edwardian courses have like a rounder hip shape. Um, but other than that, the shape itself is really good. Because it's too big, I have way too much space at the top and way too much at the bottom. So even though I'll be using supporting garments like my hip pad on top here and my bust improvers that I still have to make um, on top of here, there was too much space. Just way too much. So I'm hoping that the sizes smaller are going to fit me a little bit better. And I need to make sure that I'm having a little bit more of a hip spring. Let me, because if you check like this, it just gives it a little bit of a nicer shape. Now, I'm pretty happy. It is not bad for a first mock-up. So I'll be making the other mock-up just to make sure everything is correct. And then we can get starting couture. So uh, let's see how that other mock-up turned out. That definitely fits a lot better. I actually went down two full sizes. Um, this way, like it has plenty of space at the back, so I can lace it down a little bit once I'm more comfortable with it. This is actually unboned still, so I'm going to check how it looks with the boning, but the shape itself is already so good. So the only thing I really need to change um, is the hip spring, is to just give it a little bit of a curve here. Um, other than that, like the, the front fits so well. You always see those uh, fashion magazines where they're like standing like this, so it looks like this is even straighter. Well, this means that we can finally start cutting it out in the couture. And after that, we start sewing and make this thing happen. So, I'm going, I'm going back to work. Well, now that the sides are sewn together, it is time to prepare the front and the back pieces. Now, I've already clipped these together. Um, this is why these clips are so great, because that way you don't have to make any holes in your fabric, uh, but they're very sturdy. Now, the back is pretty simple. Um, we're going to sew here right on the edge to enforce the edge here, and then sew three channels. The middle one is going to be for the grommets. So back is pretty straightforward. Now the front, you have to pay a little bit more attention. The one side, which is the left side, is going to have this piece. Now keep in mind that a busk has two sides. One is shorter than the other. Make sure to do it on right, because if you do it on wrong, it is going to overlap. See, and that way your fabric is not going to work well. So in this case, it's going to be like this and then have it against you like this. So you open and close Ooh, from that side. So this side is going to be there. This one is going to be here. And what we're going to do for this side is pretty easy. First, we're going to sew this seam, fold it open, and then use an awl to make the holes for these. Now the other piece, you have to do some calculating before. So what I always do is I draw on the seam line so you know where your busk is going to be. Then put it up right there. And then you can draw in between 
so you know where all the hooks are going to be. So you need to sew only in between them. So let's get these pieces done. Okay, so I have a one side of the corset all done. Um, I've sewn on the back piece, but not the front piece, just to make it easier on myself sewing this whole thing, because if you have that busk constantly being in the way, it's not going to make it very easy. So I'll attach that as last. Now, the next step we need to do is add a waist tape. If you're very new to this and you're just focused on making a corset in the first place, um, it is not as necessary in every corset. I've made corsets without them and they were fine. It's just when you're going to wear a corset a lot or you want to lace down a little bit more, you do need this extra string. And I found one of the best ways to do it and make sure it's not too tight is actually measure the waist tape on your pattern. Make notches on where each pattern piece stops and then pin them on the pieces accordingly. Now, for me, I've noticed it doesn't always add up. Maybe it's because I've changed the pattern of my corset a little bit. Um, but I do try to keep it as straight of a line as possible. You do not want it to go all wonky because then it's going to fit on you all wonky. So try and keep it in a nice straight line. Mine has a little bit of a curve to it because it goes to a dip at the front. Um, but yes, waist tape, very important in this type of corset. And for my bony channels, I'll be using this. This is a very densely woven um, cotton tape. Make sure it's densely woven. I know some of the cheaper options out there, they're not as strong and they'll get holes really quickly. And the last thing you want for your bony channels is them not being strong enough. So make sure you have some strong tape that doesn't like come apart as easily. Now, what I've done is I've cut down the seam allowance of my corset to half a centimeter instead of a centimeter so that when I sew my tape over it, it's going to completely cover all of my raw edges on the inside. So we're going to have a nice and neat looking inside. Well, I'm going to do the boning channels. After that, I just need to add the front, add the boning, finish the edges, add the grommets. So the end is in sight. But yeah, in order for it to be done, I actually have to get back to work. Look at that, we have a corset. And one thing I still need to do is I need to put in the grommets on the back, which we're going to do first. And because the waist tape was making me very nervous, I really do not want to ruin this corset over it. And I don't feel that much for cutting it out after. Um, I've only sewn it to the back piece and front piece and I'm going to sew it to the side piece. So this bit is going to be loose for now and then I'll just stitch that in by hand. I know this is not quite the way I explained it earlier and how you're supposed to do it. But I really just don't want to ruin my corset. So I'm going to go with it. I just need to make the grommets, finish the last boning channel, and sew on the edging tape, and then the lace, and I want a bow. Okay, I still have some work to do, but it looks like a corset already. So that's already making me very happy. And the shape of this is also making me very happy. So I'm going to show you how I put in my grommets. Um, keep in mind, I have this very cool machine. Ooh, this thing is very heavy. Um, but this is what I use to put my grommets in. Um, so yes, let me let me show you. And um, let's set some grommets. Well, everything I need to set my grommets is what I have on this table. 
Um, I used my marker and this is a water soluble ink marker. So the nice thing is as soon as you touch with water, it dissolves and you won't see it anymore. This one is great to mark anything on your fabrics. Um, I also use this nifty tool because it will help me to measure the distance between the grommets and that way I know for sure that everything is going to be nice and neat. And here's my all uses to make the hole bigger for the grommet to make sure it fits. And I actually start making a small hole using this punch. Um, I've started doing this because uh, cotille is a very strong fabric. It's very hard to get a hole in it that's big enough for the grommet. This way it gives me a nice start, but by using on the smallest setting, um, I won't risk cutting the hole too big um, because if you do that, the grommet is just going to fall out at some point or tear out. So make sure that if you use it, use it on a very, very small setting. So let's get started. Um, I've done one to check out which sizing and what I needed. So what you do is you just do this to your snap and grab the all and then I've noticed if I do it with this one after it's going to make the hole just big enough for the grommet to fit in there. Again it's super handy to have nails for this. in and voila this is one in place then here you have the ring make sure that you use the ring the right side around there's like a rounder side and a hollow side the round side goes on top like this so we're going to be placing that on top then put it in the punch puts down and here we have one, a nicely set grommet. So time to go do the rest and um, start putting in the boning. Now for boning, I have this seven millimeter wide German plastic boning. Um, this one is from a low rose couture passementry and I'll also put it in the link down below. Um, the nice thing, it's very flexible. So when you wear the corset, it will uh, mold to your body and you can also steam it in shape a little bit and in order to finish the edges What I normally do is I cut the edges of the uh, Boning and then I file the corners to make sure there are no sharp corners left because if you have sharp corners It's going to poke into your corset and you don't want that So I'll be cutting these to size make sure that when you put them in your corset you leave plenty of space because you're going to have your um, edging tape here um, that's going to finish the corset off and then normally there's some space between that and the boning so the boning doesn't go all the way to the edge and your embroidery is like your flossing is what's going to keep the boning in place so don't try to make it too tight and all the way to the end um, because that's just not going to fit right or sit comfortably on you so that is me on boning and grommets. I'm going to get this finished and then I will uh, start putting in the boning and put on the edging tape. So let's get to all this. Well, after all that work, she is uh, finally done, as you can see, and she fits so well. It's so comfortable. 
Like there's still plenty of space everywhere to move around. So the pattern itself is a really great. The original is a little bit straighter than mine ended up to be because my hip needed just a little bit more space. But I remember RNA actually did the same. Um, so my hip shape is slightly more round now and a little bit more dramatic. So I really love it. Um, the nice thing about that is when I wear anything over it, I'll only need the bum pad that I've made earlier. So that's going to look nice for my Edwardian stuff. Um, the lace I found in my collection and goes really well color wise. Thank you to all of my friends who helped me decide on which one to use because I was staring at it for hours and I'm really grateful. Um, I'm still having to decide whether I'm going to stitch it down or not, but we'll see about that. It's finished. That's all that counts. Um, I did the lacing with the two loops. I still need to add some hooks here so I can actually hook it down and then tie it because I saw that on some extend corsets and I think it's a really great way to reduce bulk at your waist because obviously you want to keep that as narrow as possible. Now the one thing I will still need to make for this is a bust improver. That's why I kept a little bit of space here at the top. But other than that, this one is ready to get used. Also, the thing I'm very happy with is how smooth it turned out. Uh, my previous corseting cotille, I was not so smart and I actually washed my cotille. And what that does, it dissolves the stiffening agent in the cotille and it's not going to have as smooth of an appearance as when you don't wash it in this case. So I'm really glad this time I didn't do it. I'm definitely going to take some time before I make a complicated corset like this again because it took forever. My next project is actually going to be a little bit easier because I've done it before and that is a Regency Stays. Now yes I know we are time traveling a little bit but hear me out. I just want to get all the undergarments done for all my sewing this year so that no matter what I feel like I can just get stuck in any era because I'll have different undergarments to suit my different needs. So stay tuned for that video. It will come out a lot sooner than this one, I promise. If you want to make sure you're not missing it, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because otherwise you're missing all this amazing content. I am so happy this video is done. Um, I'm happy to be able to share it with y'all. Let me know if there are any questions that weren't answered for you or if you just want to know some more about course making and I'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Now for me it is time to go take some rest because I'm tired from working on this thing. So a few days of break and then I'll be back to selling for you guys in no time. I love y'all and see you in my next video.